Hey everybody, it's Monday, it's miniatures, it's Callum who painted the miniatures, so it's Miniature Monday. It's Miniature Monday. How are you feeling today, Callum? I'm feeling like it's Monday. Really? Yeah. Wow, the I'm illusion. I'm feeling good though. The I'm illusion. Good. I feel really good. It's really Monday. I painted these a long time ago, so I'm excited to actually look at them again. And, yes. Yeah. These were one of the first projects that you worked your way through really for us, weren't they? They were, yeah, because I think I got a big bundle of them and it was... A slog, I think, at the time. A slog at, at the, the time. At the time, probably wouldn't be now, but... Yeah, so these are all from Footsore Miniatures, and they're yeah. different kind of peasants and non-combat figures, really. Yeah. Always great to have in your collection, great for little objective markers or scenic areas, just to make things look pretty. A fun little diorama, And perhaps. you did this little diorama, which is also interchangeable. That, yep, so because I knew I had the range, uh, I thought I'd fit them just so that I think they are 25 mil bases that we did these on so I just basically cut holes in the, the area or yeah. left them spaced out so you could swap them out if you wanted to yeah and uh, these figures are commercially available and free to get wherever yes these ones are actually Kickstarter exclusives that unfortunately were limited which is a shame because they are really really fun I guess so you're not gonna yeah yeah sorry get get them while they're hot except you can't because they were hot a while ago and now they've cooled <laughs> they've down. cooled off slightly but what we're going to do is we're just going to do a bit of a look at these. We'll show off what you've painted because mm. they, they do look really nice. And we'll just talk about a few techniques and things that you did on them. Absolutely. So one of the standout areas on this figure, I think, for me is the face. Yeah, so I, uh, I've started using Army Painter paints at this point. Um, I used to previously use Citadel when I was painting faces, but I think the Army Painter range uh, is, is a really faster, still high quality finish. And I really, I've really enjoyed using those. I used them across this hole. So. Yeah, and this was the skin, specific skin set, right? Yeah, so I used Dorado skin, I used Amber skin, and a little off-white for the you know sharpest points on the cheeks and that. And they're really effective at conveying quite a natural skin quite sure. quickly and easily. Yeah, it looks really good. And the other thing I think that stands out is the the contrast in the tones of the donkey there as well. Oh, it's actually it's actually an ass. It is an it? ass. It is yes. <laughs> 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 but I always enjoy painting animal uh, stuff like that because you can really get that kind of nice, you know, it's quite a flat area so you can really do that muscle definition and nice contrast and transitions, absolutely. And shows off your technical blends as well. Well, this was before the airbrush as well, so it was just all by hand. All brush. Yep. So this is the poacher from the Footsore range. Uh, I'm not so keen, I like the colour combinations that I've applied to it. I was quite happy with the desaturated hood, but the actual face itself, I wasn't too pleased with. It was quite difficult actually to get underneath to get those eyes. I think the fact there. that you even tried eyes uh, is very bold of you on that figure. <laughs> Uh, cool little figure though, cool sculpt with all the little Absolutely. pelts and animals around. It's, it's quite a nice pose as well, as you like the hunched kind of approaching an animal, it's quite nice. Yeah, for sure. Okay, so from the hunter of the animals to the hunter of the animal hunter. Absolutely, we've got the gamekeeper with this model. It's, uh, I really enjoyed painting this one. It was um, the, the, the yellow tunic I really, really enjoyed. It was working in that kind of yellow. is quite a hard colour to pull off sometimes, I think. Do you go too much of like the bone colour or do you go too saturated in orange and that? So I think I, I walked a fine line with it. I was really pleased with how it came out. And you you don't want to go too bright with something like this because he needs to keep quite disguised, quite hidden to hunt, hunt the dudes who might be hunting the animals. Absolutely. So I, I think it was a good balance of... I think it's actually one of the most naturalistic kind of, you know, light hitting a model. Yeah, sure. It's almost not yellow. It's almost into it's that almost beige off, tone. It's almost off, yes. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I really pleased the combo of the blue with it as well. Yeah, the I oily think it, blue. Yeah. Yeah, great looking figure. Great sculpt as well. Great sculpt, absolutely. So we've got some different village characters here and these all come in one pack, don't they? Yeah, four models in the um, set. Nothing wrong with any of them. These two kind of tall, gangly ones look good, but I think it's the other two that really stand out They're in the set. They're what, what captured my interest when I was painting this set, for sure. And you've almost painted them as a duo as well. Yeah, so I, I imagine these being mother and, and son. Uh, so I have kind of paired the colours together. So she's wearing similar kind of cloth. I imagine them almost cut from the same kind of material. Uh, his is slightly different, just to differentiate a little bit. His scarf is slightly more purple. Hers is more of a, a pink tone to it. Sure. And obviously this little guy, he's got dreams of going to war. He's on his hobby horse and he's got his wooden sword there. Yeah, so it's a really nice sculpt. The face I really in particular enjoyed, but I also liked all his, his accoutrement, his equipment as well. His wooden sword as well was really fun to get some kind of texture in there and some glazing up to the tip of the sword and across the cross guard. And also the hobby horse was just a little bit of texture to indicate like a cloth sack or something on it. It was a, a really nice one. Yeah, with. and the, considering the size of this figure, it is a very dinky thing. The face detail you've got on there is very impressive. I think well, it's a really, really nice face sculpt. It was, it was asking for it, if I'm honest. It was yeah. fair enough. 
All right, and this one, uh, this is a cool little scene that you've made with these figures. As, you, as we said in the start of the video, a bit of a shame you can't get them anymore. You maybe can find them on eBay or something, but... I hope so, because they are really, really awesome. And you've done a great job on the painting of the individual figures, as we'll see as they spin around. But by putting them in situ here, it, it just sells it a lot more. You tell a story. So as soon as I saw these models, I imagined this kind of scene. We had the boy mooning, we had the girl pulling a face. And then we had the other child I almost calling for their parents, I think, you know, what are they doing? Yes. I, I really, I could see it vividly, so I wanted to kind of set them in a scene. Uh, so this was just a really big, I think it's 95 millimeter base we set these on. Yeah, it's a round plastic one, isn't it? It is, just with a bit of um, sculpting compound across the top and then, you know, bang in some, some tufts. Yeah, and what I quite like about it is you've made this little divide so that you've almost got one scene on one side and then there's just this little guy on I the other side. I wanted them almost like two vignettes because he almost didn't really fit in, in that scene. He'd, he, I think he's in his own world. He's found this helmet. He's like, whoa. So I wanted him kind of off to the side, still yeah. having his own mini area, but it's to still fit him on the base I thought was important because they are a set. And of course, if you want to, you can swap out the figures, as you can see here. We yes. swapped in the other villagers, and it works just as well. You can fiddle around with the placement. It's part of the joy of that, I think. That's why you know I cut those holes in there. I wanted to see what you could make with it, what kind of stories. Yeah, and you could even use it for different periods. You could. I've tried to keep it fairly neutral. This could be a countryside in England today. Yeah, for sure. And left the signpost blank so maybe we can add something on that's more specific if you yep. settle on exactly what figures are going to be on it forever <laughs> well thank you for showing those off to us callum some really nice stuff uh, it's an absolute pleasure james don't worry i'm here every monday yes you are actually uh callum gets stored away at the end of every monday put into a box in storage until the next week so um actually callum it's, it's yeah. getting to that time so time to get in um, um if you don't subscribe maybe we won't even let callum out the box next week this video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.